Hey guys, I'm Chris. I'm David. And today we're giving you the real deal on Goosebumps. Indeed. So, Goosebumps came out in 2015. Uh, it had a pretty decent cast involved. Uh, Jack Black, R.L. Stein himself. Uh, it was directed by... What was his uh, name? The director of the movie was Rob Letterman, whose past movies are kind of sad. Uh, his first movie, Shark Tale, followed by Monsters vs. Aliens, and his precursor to this movie, Gulliver's Travels, another Jack Black classic. Sure. I, I had a personal vendetta <laughs> against this film when they dropped the first couple trailers. I was working at a theater at the time that Gulliver's Travels came out, and I, I have seen that movie far too many times. I was weathered and weary and wanted nothing to do with this film. I, I appreciated the old Goosebumps books, and I was well versed in the show, but I, I was genuinely upset at some of the casting decisions. And even though I did really love Jack Black, I still love Jack Black. I'm a huge Tenacious He's D fan. He's classic. I mean, yeah. Jack Black's wonderful. Yeah, I, I, him as R.L. Stein, just the first picks and everything else, I, I just kind of was so ultimately skeptical about where the production was going to go. The first set photos that come out showing R.L. Stein, you know, and some of the kid actors, I remember seeing R.L. Stein played by Jack Black and just like, Shaking my head, you know, he's, R.L. Stein's like an older, gaunt sort of man, you know, uh, whereas Jack Black's just pudgy, you know, he looks a little too youthful, he yeah. looks so dumb with that stupid hair Nothing like R.L. Stein. Looks nothing like R.L. Stein, like not even close. Nope. So Goosebumps starts off uh, essentially more or less like the book series. Um, you've got this family that moves into a little podunk town somewhere. And uh, essentially, a bunch of spooky things start happening uh, after uh, a series of events that I don't want to spoil right off the bat. There is, there is, you know, some very twisty storytelling akin to some of the uh, children's novels going on here. Um, but it does lead to a lot of interesting scenarios, um, uh, a lot of really interesting set piece moments. He's like the first 15 minutes, you get all the basic plot you need. You know, he's new kid. He's moving past his father's death. He meets, uh, he comes up with a new friend first day of school, a kid named Champ, a little dorky kid who just sits sucks. next to him and sucks. He sucks. Oh man, we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then he, you get your love interest also, and love interest is this girl named Hannah, uh, who is his next door neighbor, so it's a classic girl next door scenario. So let's start off with some of the uh, things we didn't like about the movie so much. Uh, David, you said something about the kid champ. I kind of want to hear about this because I think we might have different opinions on this kid. Yeah, well, even though the movie does make it apparent that they're trying, they're kind of playing off of that archetypical character, they're trying to make him obnoxious intentionally and trying to draw out the humor in it. I feel like the movie doesn't do it well enough to where I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I get it, he's obnoxious. The movie is making it apparent that he's obnoxious, but I don't get as much humor out of it as maybe the film intends to. Uh, maybe it's just a difference in opinion, but I, I don't personally like him as a character. I think he's grating and obnoxious. He's played well. I think the actual actor involved actually does a great job of playing him. It's just, I, I don't like the way that he's written personally. Uh, the character Champ, I feel, is kind of an obnoxious character. He's that nerdy, you know, buck tooth kid who wants to get all the ladies, but he's just too dorky to do it. Um, and I don't know, like, the character itself could be annoying, and I feel like in most kids' movies, it would just be downright cringy to have this character. Just, we've all seen, like, you know, those Nickelodeon TV movies and stuff with those nerdy characters that yeah. just, they suck, and every word that comes out of their mouth is complete garbage. Whereas I feel like the actor, like you said, the actor who played him, I felt, actually cared about the character enough to not delves into actual cringiness. I didn't once like kind of shudder at anything this kid said. The, the, the character performances are all very good and they all kind of play off of those archetypical uh, roles and that's kind of one of the strongest points of the movie in my opinion is I feel like the writing kind of lends itself to not necessarily self-parody but actually it, it really draws into those tropes and brings them out in their humorous elements. Uh, Goosebumps I feel like more so than a horror film is really a, just a genuine 
comedy that just kind of plays off of and satires those different elements from the genre. And it does a great job of them. I think the, the writing is actually incredibly sharp all across the boards. Uh, what it really does is kind of hones in on all these different angles, all these different areas, and just uh, plays them up to their fullest. Champ is kind of a bad example. I feel like the movie actually does a way better job of poking fun at all the different tropes and genres. It brings me to another fault I have with the movie, and that's um, the tone of it. And it's not like a bad thing, it's more something I wanted out of the movie, um, and it was the fact that it didn't play to the horror element of the movie very much. And a scene in particular I can um, think of specifically is the scene in a supermarket with the werewolf of Fever Swamp. The way the scene played out is they're in like in an abandoned uh, supermarket and they're trying to avoid being caught by the werewolf of Fever Swamp yeah. who's kind of just roaming around eating shit and all that fun stuff. There wasn't much tension in that scene and that comes due to the fact that it was very like brightly lit, you know. It would have been better if the supermarket itself was like kind of dark, you know, closed down. No one was there. It was in a like essentially abandoned. It was closed. Right. It was it was desolate. Day. It was actually set during the night, so it had no yeah, reason. Yeah, it was set during the night, open. and it, it was in the middle of all the you know action happening. I felt like that was a perfect moment to sort of like kind of slow it down a bit and really add tension to the story, even though we knew the kids were gonna die or anything. It's right. a kids movie. The whole movie sort of does that. It doesn't really. You know, Goosebumps is horror for kids, and I feel like the movie itself doesn't play to the horror element um, as much as I wanted it to. Even the show had horror elements in it. It was cheesy as hell, but, you know, it played to some of the horror. Right, right, right. And that's kind of the biggest problem with it, is that clearly Nickelodeon wanted it to be a bridge between the old fans who really appreciated all the old books and the old media, and the new fans who are trying to get into Goosebumps. But the problem with this film is that I don't think it's a good representation of the old books and the old media. It feels more like just a goofy comedy with some very, very light horror elements. And it's not going to please everyone, not necessarily in the way that it should. And that's kind of another thing is I feel like it's a little tonally inconsistent. Um, you've got references to actual Goosebumps novels and Goosebumps media in general, right. but you've also got references to uh, 80s and 70s horror movies as well. There's actually a scene towards the end of the movie where they're uh, stuffed up inside of the school, they're trying to get all the monsters away, and uh, Jack Black runs into... Uh, one of the other areas of the school, and they're doing a stage play rendition of The Shining. And it actually draws immediate comparisons to the situation that they're in right then, uh, because he's trying to write a book to send them back in, and he's kind of going out of his mind, and he's just talking to himself, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And it actually draws back to a scene earlier on in the movie where he's talking about how much he hates Stephen King, and you can see the look in Jack Black's eyes, like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, I just now got that. Yeah, and that's, and that's, pretty, that's pretty incredible, actually. He does not like Stephen King at all. No, he sure. hates Stephen he King. He went on a rant about Stephen King, right. and I, I didn't catch that Stephen King reference. Yeah. Again. That's funny. That's fu it is really funny. And there's a lot of little peppered in scenes throughout the film paying homage to older horror movies you'll see it as you get into the film yeah that's true about the movie uh and not something i really did think of until you brought it up was it does it has like it's a kids movie for sure it's a movie for kids to watch you know now nowadays but yeah. it has all these references to, like you know like he was saying with old goosebumps the show the book and these old like horror movies that are more for like older fans like you know the mid-20s you know millennial type people who grew up with the books and maybe with these movies and it does kind of, yeah, the it doesn't mesh like all the, like very thoroughly right. throughout the movie. There are a know? lot of ideas they're going to, on. They're pandering to two different audiences almost, right. you know, and it doesn't quite connect as well as it should. Um, it's important to note that Danny Elfman did do the score yes. for the movie, so there's actual talent, you know, be, um, behind that, yeah. and I think that's why it does. And like I said, it's not, to me at least, not super memorable, but it's not bad at all. It's actually really good. I think it reminds me a lot of his uh, earlier scores, uh, some of his more dark and uh, uh, surreal works, kind of like uh, Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, he's or, uh, pretty much anything to do with Tim Burton. He's yeah, it really, of, it really reminds me of a lot of his work with uh, Tim Burton. I can it see really that for sure, yeah. yeah. And I, I think maybe the horror element of the, you know, kind of plays a part in it. He's able to do something that's both whimsical and kind of fits the tone of like... Exactly. He accompanies it very well yeah. and I feel like the actual accompanying soundtrack really enhances the mood of the entire film. Absolutely. Um, that said, I, I do want to say I wish at some point, I, as I think when I watched the movie, I wished at the end credits they had played like Danny Elfman like 
would have done like some sort of remix or something of the Goosebumps, of the Goosebumps theme. theme. What's I going to hear the Goosebumps theme. There's no it's Goosebumps classic. theme here. Yeah. Yeah, it fit the tone of the show so well. And I feel like it just fits the atmosphere of this. It could have fit the atmosphere of the movie and just Goosebumps in general. Yeah. That musical. So tone much potential. The show. Not only that, but you've got a vocalist. <laughs> From Tenacious D <laughs> playing R.L. Stein, but you don't have him singing the Goosebumps theme. What? Come on! Is there to sing in the Goosebumps theme? Do 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 like acapella? I'm Jack Black. Do 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 do. Come on now! There is so much potential in this idea. The Goosebumps too better have it in there at some point. So somebody from the production area needs to talk to us about getting some ideas situated. So you want you want Jack Black to do a song in the movie? Yes. Is that what you're yes. essentially saying? Please God, Danny Elfman, reach out to Jack Black. He's he's willing and ready. It's just there's no music in the movie that has vocals. It's all like orchestral sort of. Exactly. Like exactly. So why an ending credit? Song Sung featuring by Jack, Jack, Jack Black as oh. both the puppet and R.L. Stein <laughs> as would slap. be as Slappy would huh. be a phenomenal idea. David, what did you overall think of the Goosebumps movie? What is the real deal on this movie, man? Uh, I think personally, I'd give it a C plus. C plus. Yep. All right. I was actually very impressed with this film. Surprised because the director who was helming it, he doesn't really have anything under his belt that would lead me to believe that he had any of the competence necessary to really get involved and make a decent representation of the Goosebumps media. Um, so overall, yeah, you've got really sharp writing, you've got really sharp acting, except for maybe some of the secondary characters. Uh, direction's fairly competent, nothing mind-blowing or anything like that. I did want to point out that there actually is some interesting directing here and there, like the scene with Slappy where his head's rotating and the camera is rotating around yeah. him. I thought that was actually pretty cool, and there are yeah. actually a series of scenes just like that that, is, that are pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, I would probably give this movie... I'll, a little higher than that, I'd probably give it a B, uh, just because, like I said, it's above average, doesn't do anything offensively bad, um, and it's enjoyable enough to watch through. Like, I rewatched it recently before this review, and I found the time kind of just flew by. It wasn't a struggle to sit through nope, or anything. it's just the right length. Just pop it on, sit back, have your mind melted for 90 minutes with spooky horror mm -hmm. and family fun adventure. Solid movie overall, I think. Solid. Right on. Right on. Alright, so I'm Chris. I'm David. And you just got the real deal on Goosebumps. Congrats.